This is Twit. We're going to go full on gearhead here and talk about the thing that makes the internet work. Of course, I'm talking about BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. And we now know that Google is going to abandon BGP next year. Uh, Google, they don't want to play by the same set of rules that the traditional ISPs and carriers have played by. And so they're going to be dumping BGP. Uh, to date, Google has the largest private network in the world. It carries about 20 to 25% of internet traffic on the fiber that they own, not lease. That's hundreds of global cache locations, 15 data centers, 90 points of presence, and there's, they just continue to build. We know that their facilities blanket the global map, which is why we can have things like Google Fiber, because they can actually just stretch it out from one of those data centers and, and get very inexpensive access to consumers. Now, Cheever, why do they want to dump BGP? We've complained about BGP in the past because it is one of these things that was built at a time where security wasn't all that much of an issue. But why specifically does Google want to dump it now? Well, I think it's a lot of the work that hasn't happened. The working groups have been comprised of a lot of different manufacturers, you know, stakeholders in the protocol. And, of course, people like Juniper and Cisco and Sienna and people like that have a lot of investment into BGP, and they want it the new versions of BGP to be better for them. So BGP has become very large, very cumbersome. Um, the reality is, is a person that knows BGP well can demand massive, massive salaries because it's, while everybody keeps saying, oh, BGP is very simple. I, I, I beg to differ. I'm sorry. BGP is as much black magic as there are any protocols on the face of the earth. <clears throat> the reality is, is a far too large number of internet outages are caused by people that don't understand BGP. If you set up your peering incorrectly, like for instance, I had my favorite example is I was trying to download some new scripts from Spirant for their AX4000 test tool. That literally was a locate a server two miles away from me. When I did my trace route, I was going, why is this FTP taking so long? I did a trace route, and for some reason or another, the link over between the University of Hawaii and Spirant on the commercial side in a data center over by Honolulu International Airport routed me all the way through Chicago, Illinois, and then back. And that we found out is because someone made a mistake and they fat fingered a BGP peering number. This happens more and more often than you would imagine. And if someone goes and does say, for instance, oh, they use the out of the box value of a BGP peer of one, that puts you at the same level as the top level routers. If that actually was allowed to proliferate to your upstream ISP and went out onto the global backbone, it would then take your entire the entire North America and try to route it through your router. We've seen it happen. So BGP needed to change. BGP must change. I think what's happening is, um, yes, uh, things have to change. Google got tired. HiWeb in the chat rooms already mentioned that, yeah, that's why you test, you test, you test. But HiWeb, you're an expert at BGP. AT&T has this huge amount of procedures and checklists to make sure that you don't make mistakes, that you double, you triple, you quadruple check. You have another second set or third set of eyes making sure you don't make a mistake. This is not the case at a lot of organizations. And... Yeah, hey, run BGP. It's a great it's a great protocol, but it's time has come. Google is saying we're tired. We're doing our own. We think it works better. We've got a lot of smart people. We've gotten rid of a lot of the baggage from BGP, a lot of places where you can make mistakes. Um, we're going to go and do this, and I'm sorry, we're tired of waiting for you guys. Right. Will we see Google's protocol become part of BGP or maybe BGP2 or eBGP or whatever you want to call it? Maybe. But anyway, that's enough of my rant. Yeah. It, it's the newer, greater... Google says, we, we think we can do it better. We're going to show the world we can do it better. It's up to you whether you want to use our protocol. 
Now, I think we should step back into a little bit of 101 and uh, do a quick BGP primer here because people are asking, well, what is the alternative? The Google alternative is called Expresso. It's their project Expresso, which is kind of like BGP, except it's secure and it has different levels of authentication to make sure that you're not going to fat finger a route or even worse, maliciously reroute traffic towards your domains. Now, let's explain how BGP works. When people think of, of routing, they're probably thinking of what's going on inside of their switches in their network. That's that's the thing that's closest to them. Now, we know that that works by keeping a table of all the physical addresses, the MAC addresses of all the devices on a network. And so whenever you have a frame that enters the network that has both its source and destination, the switch can look at its memory table. And even if it doesn't know exactly where that device is, it will at least know what port that device is connected to the network on. And it could pass it to the next switch and the next switch until it gets to the device. Well, when we go onto the internet, that doesn't work. There's just, there's too much. The, the memory table that you would need to store Every device currently active on the global network is ridiculous. Not only would it take an incredible amount of space, but we just don't have the processing power to, to sort all those packets really quickly. So BGP gives us a way, Border Gateway Protocol gives us a way to sort of have breadcrumbs. We, we may not know exactly where that client is, but at least we can shoot that packet off in the right direction. And then the next router and the next router and the next router can get it closer and closer and closer to its destination. It's, a, it's an interesting system, and it's worked for years. But as Cheever pointed out, there are some fundamental problems with it, the biggest being shouting. In BGP, he who shouts the loudest and the longest gets heard. And so what can happen is if you accidentally advertise routes that you do not own or advertise routes that you're not supposed to have, you can still get that traffic. As you, as you advertise the routes, everything gets confused because now maybe you have two different servers that are saying, I own this route, I own this device. Well, what Google is trying to do and what the consortium of non-BGP companies is trying to do is to say, we, let's move away from this, this archaic infrastructure that, that depended on people doing the right thing and instead move to an architecture where we can actually say, look, there's never any reason for a server in Iran to claim that it's Google, which by the way, folks, did happen a few years ago. You may remember that outage. So, Cheever, did I, did I miss anything? I mean, that, that's, that is a super <clears> simple <throat> BGP primer, but that's essentially the problem that we're trying to get rid of. Get rid of a protocol that was around before the network was this big. Well, there's also another hidden uh, thing that's happening. With this new global routing protocol, um, they're calling it GAFAM, um, what it's going to happen is Google and their associated bigwigs are now going to be getting the vast majority of transit fees. We know some guys, uh, Brandon Ross was one of them. He had, in a previous life, a job, and his job was specifically optimizing routes. You can do an amazing amount of things by using BGP and its routing tables to be able to move your data around in a more efficient manner. So, like, for instance, if I needed to go to Chicago from Honolulu, it might be cheaper for my upstream ISP to route me through Los Angeles, but the link to San Francisco is dramatically faster. So what someone like Brandon would do is he'd play with the routing tables and set up preferred routes. And we can also do that with things like MPLS. And I'm pretty sure, though I haven't read, read the RFC yet, that my um, Google's protocol includes an amazing number of similarities to MPLS where we can put preferences and things like that. But the hidden part is this is creating a revenue stream for Google that is going to be absolutely staggering because they're going to get, what, 20 to 25 percent, maybe more of the transit fees of the entire global Internet. That's a lot of money. Now, Chiba, let's talk about uh, some of the ramifications of this decision. So we know that the, the GA fam, this is the group of Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, that is trying to get us off of BGP onto a more sec secure solution. They, they've already committed themselves to moving towards this technology, which means the ones who are not included on in the group are going to have to build in some sort of bridging technology, just like we do with 6 to 4 or, or 4 to 6. That's not simple, right? I mean, this, this could break 
what we know as the internet. If you've got this many people on the new standard and this many people who who can't change, it yeah. Let, let's put it this way: it it can it it might, but the reality is is this is a fairly well known type of thing. Um, back in I think it was ninety seven ninety eight. Um, Jim Martin, Helen Gary, uh, Carl Arbach, and I did a multicast routing um, demonstration where we used the MITRE software called Route D. Uh, it was by router, uh, MITRE in those days. And we created this in between gateway. So gateways do exist. And you can be absolutely sure that the big wit, the big players like Juniper and Cisco and Sienna are going to have routing engines where they can plug this new protocol in. Because remember, protocols, even though they might have started off as C code, typically are not going to end up. It's going to end up at a very high level descriptor language because that's more efficient. So making changes in the high level for creating and disassembling these packets, because remember, it's all the same data. We're just putting different headers and routing information on there. They're going to have those modules out very, very quickly if they don't already have them out now. And the big boys like Juniper, Sierra, and Cisco all have huge, huge, huge routing engines. I wish I could show you some pictures, but I'm not allowed to take pictures inside the cable landing station. But as I walk to the Aloha Cable Observatory, there are just row upon row upon row of Sienna routers. And these things have the horsepower to route for an entire city. No problem. And there are rows of these things. So, yeah... It's going to be maybe a little blip. We might have a little bit of a downturn, but I don't think it's going to last very long. And when you have players that big demanding that you use their protocol, is going to happen. What is going to happen is a learning curve. Guys like our friend HiWeb in the uh, chat room, they're going to have to probably go through some retraining on these new protocols and how to optimize that connection for the gateway. It's going to happen. It's going to take a little time, but I don't think it's going to be as disastrous as you might think.